Welcome to online worship at Trinity. We're so glad that you're joining us. Our worship continues in this season of Epiphany as we think about how we can share the light of Christ with those around us. We join together now in our opening hymn. Our service continues with the responsive call to worship and invocation. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. God is a refuge for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we gather in the presence of a holy God, we are mindful of our sins. We have sinned both by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved God with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves.
God has heard your confession and for the sake of Jesus Christ forgives all your sins. You are forgiven. You are free. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit, that we also may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our service continues with the reading of God's Word. Our first lesson is written in the third chapter of the book of the prophet Jonah. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he called out, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is written in the seventh chapter of 1 Corinthians. This is what I mean, brothers, The appointed time has grown very short. From now on, let those who have wives live as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no goods, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the children's message. Hello, everyone. Take a look at my table today. What do you see? Can you figure out what all of these things are? are used for. Well, if you said fishing, you are right. I mean, just take a look at all the equipment we have here. We have waders. We have all kinds of lures to catch fish. We have a rod and a reel. We have a net, so when you catch the fish, you can gather them up. We've got a bucket that you can put minnows in, and it has a stringers in it. And then we have a bucket that will hold your fish or a basket that will hold your fish. We even have a fishing net like the ones they used in the time of Jesus. It takes a lot of equipment to go fishing to catch fish, doesn't it? And this is just a small portion. There are people who like to fish to relax and have quiet time. There are those who like to fish in tournaments and see how many or how big of a fish they can catch. You can fish just about anywhere there's water, so a stream, a creek, a lake, even an ocean. There are people who absolutely love to fish. Me, not so much. You see, when you go to fish, if you're going to use a hook, sometimes you're going to have to put a worm or a minnow on the hook. Ugh, I don't like to touch those things. And then if you catch a fish, you have to get the fish off of the hook. Again, not really for me. 
In today's gospel lesson, we're going to be hearing a story about fishing. When I was a little girl, my dad and my grandfather and my brother and I went fishing together. After a while, I was completely bored. And so I started talking, and I was talking and talking and talking. Imagine that, me talking. And everyone began to tell me I needed to be quiet, that I was going to scare the fish. I learned later in life that fish in the water can't really hear that talking or that noise above water. So it's okay to talk when you fish. But here's some other things I've learned about fishing too. The first one is you have to have the right equipment. You can't catch fish without it. Whether it's a rod and reel like this or it's a net like this. You need this equipment in order to catch the fish you want. The other thing I've learned is that you have to go to where the fish are, whether it's that stream or the creek or the ocean, because they're not just going to come to you. Third thing I've learned about fishing is you have to have lots of patience. And in our gospel lesson today, when we hear about fishing, we are not going to hear about fishing for fish. We're going to hear about fishing for men. Jesus was calling his first disciples, and he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, and he came upon Simon and Andrew. And he gives them this beautiful invitation. He says, come and follow me. He's saying to them, come, be with me, follow me, be my disciple. Learn from me, be with me, spend time with me. And then he says, and I will make you fishers of men. The Bible tells us that they immediately left everything and began to follow Jesus. A little later, Jesus comes upon James and John. He gives them that same invitation, come and follow me. And the Bible tells us again, they dropped everything, leaving their father's boat to go and follow Jesus, to become fishers of men. Fishing was a really important occupation in the time of Jesus. And I love that Jesus used the analogy of fishing for men with these fishermen. Jesus would gather 12 disciples in all, and seven of the 12 were fishermen. And I'm sure they could relate to this because they knew what it meant to fish for fish. They knew that you needed the equipment. They knew that you needed to go to where the fish were, and they knew that you needed to have patience to get what you needed from that. And it helped apply it to them when Jesus talked about fishing for men. Jesus has called us, too, to be fishers of men. He has called us to be his disciples. He has given us that invitation, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Just like his disciples, to be fishers of men, to be able to share God's love with others, to bring them into that invitation to come and follow, we need to have the right equipment. We need to know God's word. We need to learn it and place it in our hearts. And we need to live it out each and every day. And then we have to go. We have to go to where the people are around us. Whether that's far away in another country or if it's right next door in our neighborhoods. We've been called to go and make disciples of all nations to tell everyone of God's great love for us. And then we must have patience. Some people will be anxious to hear this word that we're telling them and very excited. Others might have questions. Still more may not really want to hear what we have to say. But that's okay. We must be patient and lean on God. We go and share the great news, the good news, with everyone. And then we trust the Holy Spirit to work faith in the hearts of those that we have shared God's love with. So we have been called to go and be his disciples, to be fishers of men. I think I like that kind of fishing best. What about you? So let us go and be his disciples in this world. We're going to pray, and we're going to pray as we do each week. I'm going to pray a line, and I'm going to ask you to repeat that line in prayer to God after me. Dear Jesus, help us become fishers of men. Equip us 
send us. Grant us patience, love, and understanding as we seek to be your disciples, sharing your love with others in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. The Holy Gospel is written in Mark's Gospel, the first chapter. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, who were in their boat mending the nets. And immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon today is based on the gospel lesson which was just read from Mark chapter 1. Most of the gospel lessons for the current church year are from Mark's gospel, and such is the case with today's gospel lesson. In typical style, Mark moves ahead quickly. For in just the 15th verse of his gospel, Mark already has Jesus announcing the beginning of his public ministry. Jesus kicks off that approximately three years of public ministry with these words, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. With these words, Jesus begins the public phase of his ministry. Immediately after this announcement, Jesus begins to call his first 12 disciples. With relatively few details, Mark records how Jesus goes alongside the Sea of Galilee and calls two sets of brothers who were commercial fishermen, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, and James and John. Three things are noteworthy of Jesus' call to his first disciples. First, Jesus says to them, follow me. Jesus' word choice here is very important for us to notice. While Jesus wants them to follow his teachings, he doesn't say to them, follow my teachings. While Jesus wants them to follow his example, he doesn't say to them, follow my example. No, Jesus says to them, follow me. Jesus says it this way to emphasize something that is very important. Jesus is emphasizing the relational nature of his call to follow. That at its core, daily discipleship is a walk with the Lord each and every day that is deep and personal and intimate. It is a relationship of walking step in step with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is so important for us to focus on. 
We, as Jesus' modern-day disciples, we too are called by Jesus, who says to each one of us, follow me. Follow me, Jesus says to us. We are called into a relationship, a relationship with Jesus. We are called by a loving Lord and Savior into that personal relationship of walking with him day by day. A relationship with one who speaks to us through his word. A relationship with one who hears our most intimate and personal prayers and responds to them. A relationship with one who has promised that he will be with us always. The second thing noteworthy about Jesus' call to his first disciples is that Jesus connects following with faith sharing. His words to those soon-to-be first disciples who formerly were commercial fishermen were these, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. Notice how Jesus connects following with faith sharing, but in a way that fits those he is calling. He is saying to them, the gifts you employ to be successful as commercial fishermen, use those same gifts now to share my love with others. Use those gifts like tenacity and courage and persistence and planning that were so useful to you in your fishing career. Use the gifts you have been given to share your faith with others. The call fits the ones being called. So it is with you and with me. As we receive the call of Jesus, he invites us to follow him and to use the gifts that he has given to each one of us, different and varying gifts to share our faith, to share the love of Jesus with those around us. I doubt if Jesus were to call any one of us out loud to faith today that he would say to any of us, follow me and I will make you fishers of men and women. No, he might say something like this. He would maybe say, follow me and I will make you caregivers of men and women. Follow me and I will make you teachers of men and of women. Follow me and I will make you as ones who serve humbly in sharing my love with men and with women. The call fits the person called and the gifts they have been given. Think of the gifts that God has given you. Think of how you might use those gifts in sharing the love of Jesus with others. God is not asking you to become something you are not. He is asking you to use what he has already given to you in service to Christ, in sharing the love of Christ with those around you. For me, that meant becoming a pastor. For you, it might mean using your gift of compassion to care for others and to love them for Christ, or to patiently and persistently pray for someone that the Holy Spirit would break through in their heart and in their life, and they would receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Or to faithfully be a part of a Bible study where you and others are being discipled in the name of Jesus as you grow in your faith and in your ability to share his love. 
How can you use the specific gifts God has given to you to make disciples? Maybe you already know. Maybe you're already actively doing that. Maybe you're in the I should stage. I should be doing that, but I'm not quite sure how to go about it, where to start, or not exactly sure what gifts God has given me to use for that purpose. Pray for the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you. Maybe you don't really have much of an idea at all where to start or haven't really thought about it that way before. If that's the case, talk to me or one of the other pastors here at Trinity or talk to one of the DCEs or another brother or sister in Christ. Let us help you to recognize the giftedness that God has uniquely given to you and how to unleash it to let Christ's light shine through you. The third noteworthy aspect of Jesus' call to his first disciples is the immediacy of their response. Immediately, Simon and Andrew left their nets and followed Jesus. Immediately, James and John left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed Jesus. My guess is that some of their fellow fishermen scoffed at them and ridiculed them. Hey, Simon, hey, Andrew, what are you doing? Where are you going? There's work here to be done. You can't just go off with some guy who calls you to follow him. Maybe even these new disciples had some moments where they thought, what have we gotten ourselves into anyway? The immediacy of their response is a clear sign that God, the Holy Spirit, is at work. And that's what I want to highlight today. Where is God, the Holy Spirit, at work in your life right now? Are you attuned to the movement of the Spirit? Maybe it's that person you just can't stop thinking about and praying about. Maybe it's that thought you keep having of a new way to try to share the love of Jesus Christ with that person God has placed into your life. Maybe it's seeing how God blesses your care and love shown to people in your life. Pray for eyes to see the Spirit at work. Pray for insight into what God is doing right now in your life and in the lives of the people around you. Pray that you might truly see. Follow me, Jesus said to those first disciples. Follow me, Jesus says to you and to me, his modern-day disciples. Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men and women. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, now and and forever. Amen. We join now in confessing our common Christian faith. Today we use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we give you thanks that you call us to be your disciples and a part of your kingdom. Help us daily to follow where you are leading. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who need your healing power. We pray in particular for Carla Doutenhahn, Myrna Dubois, Conrad Fassold, Jenna Hazy, Anne Nineman, Angela Klein, Evelyn Costigan, as well as those we name in our hearts before you now. Grant to each renewed health according to your will. Continue also to bless the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our leaders. Bless our President, Joe, our Vice President, Kamala, our Governors, Laura and Mike, Senators, members of Congress, mayors, 
judges, and others in positions of authority. Help them to serve with integrity and humility. Bring healing to our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the poor, the disadvantaged, the widowed, the aged, the unborn. For all who need a special measure of our care and of your protection. Help us to support those in difficult and even desperate circumstances in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as Lutheran Schools Week begins, we give you thanks for Trinity Lutheran Church Preschool and for other Lutheran schools. Thank you for your abundant blessings upon our school. Continue to bless teachers, staff, students, and families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We rejoice with those who celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and other life milestones. Help us, even in difficult times, to give thanks for your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We join in singing the doxology. Receive now the blessing of God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join in singing our closing hymn. Have no fear, little flock, have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock, have good cheer, little flock, have good cheer, little flock, for the Father will keep you in his love forever. Have good cheer, little flock. Praise the Lord, I am up. Praise the Lord, I am up. For he stoops down to heal you, uplift and restore you. Praise the Lord, I am up. Thankful hearts, praise to God. Thankful hearts, praise to God. For he stays close beside you. All things 
works we do thank the hearts raised to God. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for online worship. We're so glad that you were with us. If you accessed this video worship via the Trinity website, there are a number of interactive buttons that you can take advantage of. We'd love to have you indicate your participation by recording your attendance. There's also an opportunity to leave prayer requests. We'd love to pray for you. And there's also an online giving option. Also for our members, a reminder that our congregational assembly will be on Sunday, uh, January 31st at 1 o'clock via Zoom. There are informational meetings to prepare for that meeting. Consult the Friday e-news for those links. May God bless and be with you.